Basic Sorgonomics, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here, talking whatever the heck is on our minds, isn't it? Uh, of course, with me, as usual, is my wonderful wife and compatriot in Psychic Media Services and Sorgatron Media. It's Missy. Hi, everybody's flaw on the Twitter. I'm, I'm not on the monitors, so I, I don't understand what's oh, happening Oh, we didn't turn here. that bit on. Hold on, that'll be on in a second. So, hi, we're on, we're on the internet, we're, I believe. This is the internet. This is the internet? This is the internet. I think I was on the internet most of the weekend. Yeah, we kind of were, weren't we? So, uh, yeah. we're, we're kind of recovering off of uh, PodCamp Pittsburgh, the 12th such event uh, that we've been involved in. It was a lot of fun. I uh, learned a lot. A lot of interesting things happened. Um, so, but you, you in particular had, had something you wanted to say, or at least like a topic on your mind with it. And she's moving the mic. This is a heck of a time. Sorry. There we go. Sorry. Yeah. Bring uh, it back around. Yeah. I, I, I needed to kind of regroup it here. Uh, yeah. So it's always interesting when we do the pod camp events, because going into pod camp, it's crazy, 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 crazy morning of pod camp i'm usually like why do we still do this but then i meet somebody at pod camp a couple of somebodies maybe sometimes and it reinvigorates why we do what we do with pod camp this year i met michael and kate and tao so the three of them were that were essentially reinvigoration for the the reason that we do what we do um so yeah kate was really interesting because she's starting up a project And when she found out about PodCamp, it was one of those, this thing is for free. You're kidding me, right? (laughs) So she came and she took part in some of the sessions on Saturday. And then Sunday during the time that we allotted to talk to our experts, again, for free, she was able to talk to people about her podcast, her website, and her social media outreach for everything. And... Talking with her just made it really, like, it, it gave me that, ah, thank you, kind of moment, because it's, it, it, it made, it made me feel warm and, and cozy inside, because somebody appreciates the fact that we're putting forth our time and effort to do this. It, and it's definitely, um, every once in a while, you need, you need to get a little bit of perspective of somebody outside, right? Like, you know, we, we have our head down doing this a lot, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we don't kind of maybe assess the value the way others do in, in what we're able to do and the tools that we're using and the knowledge that we have because it's kind of just every day for us. Well, and it's interesting that you just mentioned the value of it because, again, this is a free event. Mm-hmm. We organize it. We put it together. It's a two-day conference. It's a free event. And Michael... Again, one of one of the folks that we met this weekend with everything, I found out about it a couple of days beforehand, hit us up, wanted to volunteer, so he was at the registration table for a good bit of the weekend with us. And when I was talking with him after the fact, just to t- kind of touch base and, and see, you know, you learned stuff that you were coming here to learn. And he had a lot of good things to say about the conference. And his coolest takeaway was, yeah, If I would have been doing this with other conferences that I've done similar to this, I'd be looking at paying, you know, almost 500 bucks for for a ticket. And for this event, I wouldn't have any problem paying that 500 bucks Mm -hmm. for this event. Mm -hmm. And you do it for free. Yeah, and it's interesting because I've I've looked at a lot of other conferences and I've looked at like you know and, and you know ones are like maybe thirty forty bucks and and even those big like you know we were looking at tickets for the five seven hundred dollar uh podcast movement you know and mm-hmm. and and i keep looking and i was just like what it, am i going to get that kind of value out of it you know we're not a and obviously those are kind of aimed at um i'm a corporation that has a bunch of money and want to dump it into podcasting to make more money right it, you know it, it's kind of hard for little lowly small business podcasters to drop 700 bucks to for a conference to see kevin smith speak about podcasting you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Networking's great mm-hmm. in those cases, but I don't know what new information I'd be able to get that I couldn't find online. That I couldn't find at other conferences that are much cheaper than something like that. Yeah, so like, it's it's really interesting because one of the questions that we do ask is, you know, at the beginning of of the weekend is, how many of you out there this is your first pod camp? And this year we had quite a few people raise their hands. So we actually, I think, had more new 
first time attendees this year than we did we have in the past in comparison. And the other thing that we usually do is we ask after the fact. So who's who's going to take the information that they learned here and they're going to apply it to whatever they're they're doing out there. And again, we had quite a few people talking and, you know, yeah, this you know, I found out the information to what I need to do with my podcast. The reason that you know, it's it's been a little bit difficult is because I haven't had the right microphone or if I haven't had the right microphone, I didn't have the right settings for it. So they were able to, you know, literally talk to our experts and troubleshoot everything and get some tips and tricks for, for making the most of what they have available. So we're not telling people to go out and buy, you know, $600 microphones. No, we're telling people, this is the microphone you're using. This is how you can work around and, and get it to work well for you. I think it's funny. It's not the one that's uh, it's not the one that we use for for recording necessarily, but uh, I have in front of me. This is actually just kind of a spare microphone we have for some of our remotes, uh, a blue microphone which goes for forty or fifty bucks right now. And I, I, you know, these are so cheap. I have a couple of them, just in case we need to do like a recording somewhere. Well, yeah. and even your your remote guys for your in house podcasts like the Awesome that's what Cast, they the Mam Show. Yeah. That's what they use. Either we have sent it to them or we have told them, you know, get one of these because it works well and it, it's adaptable. Uh, Absolutely. I know that Amanda and Steve with Bold Pittsburgh, with the Bold Nights Out and now the Bold Sports, they use a snowball mic and they pretty much sit it on their coffee table while they're talking and they record their episodes that way. Which maybe isn't the most recommended. Like I was really big in my session uh, this time about like, you know, get close to the mic because you know you you get that room sound and and you're able to narrow it down more you know that's why i'm really on top of this thing and i tell you guys on the couch to do the same thing um but the same with this you know and i don't know if this one has the adjustment you know to be so room like it it would just pick up the whole room but that's not always a great thing but um but no it's but 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 it's enough like I, i was going through some people's podcasts like from this weekend or or that I've discovered from other networks that we're, we're affiliated with. And, um, you know, it, it's... Some of them have that roominess to them, but it's still not bad. It's still listenable, and the content's great, right? <laughs> well, it's, it's funny that you're talking about it, because one of the sessions that I did this weekend was um, monetizing your, your podcast. Mm-hmm. And one of the questions that I had was what are the three things that you would recommend for trying to monetize your podcast? And I said, first and foremost, make sure that your content is worth marketing. Because if you have a really great, you know, if if you're not engaging, if you don't have a great concept, it's going to be difficult for people to get it. The other problem is, is that if it's not a quality product, so I literally breathed into the microphone like this. I'm like, so you're, you're talking in your podcast and all of a sudden you have this in the background. <sighs> you know, it's, it's not going to sound so good. And, you know, the people who are monetizing it, they're going to look and be like, all right, these people are using whatever they're doing. They're not doing it very professionally and they're not going to take it as seriously if, if they're listening to it. And while you're talking and they have this in the background, <sighs> I'm like I legit did that into the microphone at PodCamp. But it's true. Like it, it makes a huge difference with it. Um, so I had a couple of those those people from, from that discussion come up and say, you know, hadn't really thought about it, but yeah, you're you're right that if I'm trying to get people to monetize it, they kind of have to be able to take it seriously. So how do we fix this? And I referred them to, you know, the the other sessions that we were doing. Um, there were, there was another presenter there that's doing the social voice project. He literally brought a handful of microphones with him, and he was talking about the difference that a good quality microphone makes and he had samples of different microphones and what the difference with the audio input for each one does you know so you've got your directional microphones you've got your room microphones you've got your you know lower end kind of option things like you were talking about with yeah, your yeah, all laid out there like it's like mm-hmm. he had a um i mean he, he he just had like a bandolier of, of microphones it was pretty great i posted that picture and, and and i need to rework it because it didn't work out great as the cover to the pittsburgh podcasters group and buzzy over at epicast is like he recognized something and called it out on the post already because he's I, like I caught that he's too. just he's an audio nut right like he yeah. knows all those microphones and what they do and everything like he's high on the audio side of things right Mm -hmm. uh whereas i'm more the video side of things obviously right so we just come from different worlds doing the same thing you know in the same space so it's really interesting but well the other cool thing is that doing the stuff that you've been doing even though you're video based 
you have started you have become an audiophile mm. over the past you know decade or so primarily because i know we'll be watching something on television and you're just sitting there you're like oh my goodness i can't do this anymore and i'm looking at you going what are you talking about you notice that there's a sound delay or that there's some sort of weird noise that, that it's picking up in the background or whatever. And it drives you absolutely insane. Whereas I'm so looking at it going, I didn't notice or I noticed it, but it wasn't that bad. So no, I, I think that you've become an audio engineer based on your podcasting for the last. You, you do by experiment experiential. And I don't know, you know, everything there is by audio. I can't recognize, Oh, that's a cardioid. That's a, you know, Omni mic, you know, or, or, or things like that. And sometimes in my head that even gets switched, which is which, you know, <laughs> and, but I know what those are and I know the concepts and just by, I know those microphones behave a certain way. I know this microphone behaves a certain way and swear by those microphones for like guest work or anything like that, you know, like that's the kind of things we've picked up on. I understand the necessity, necessity of a pop filter on both of our mics, right? Um, um, you know. I understand how the gain works and how that helps remove a lot of the room noise in here when we do our live streams. Like, and then that's a lot of trial and, or, or, trial and error and paying attention, you know, so, but, but no, I, and I had, and, you know, going back to your original point, no, I had a lot of the similar kind of things. Like I, I love listening to people, you know, that have ideas or, and also have already been executing ideas and just want to make that idea better. Because mm -hmm. I, 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 in the keynote, I, I kind of harped on a little bit of, and I, I do just all the time, like, hey, hit record, <laughs> you know? Uh, and, and even, <laughs> even, even like, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of, I love when I put a statement out like that and then I, I sit in there a session that has a different, like, the first thing about podcasting is that it sounds good, you know, versus, well, no, you, you can't get to that point if you didn't hit record first. And, yeah. and, 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 and there's different levels and, we, and I kind of get into and explain that. But there, it's also great to talk to people that have started a thing, like uh, our uh, cockpit, uh, cocky cockpit, uh, one guy that was in a lot of our podcasts and video workshops over the weekend. Um, and, and I guess the, the whole crew was in some of our Saturday stuff too, mm -hmm. right? Chat with him and these guys already have 20 episodes. He realizes Oof, we got to bump up our quality. They're already going to comic cons and doing shows and things and doing videos. And like, he's, he's, he's stepped into all the right places, even beyond just, I'm doing a podcast. Now, what do I do? It's like, I'm doing a podcast and I'm making video content. And I'm going to cons and be getting in front of people. Mm -hmm. It's just like, well, yeah, you're already doing half the stuff I would tell you to do anyways. Yep. And taking advantage of opportunities. And you just need to, you know, like, like Doug and I are just looking. It's like, wow, yeah, I like how you did this, but make sure you do this too, you know. Yeah. It, it, it's additional and, and um, um, updating instead of just, uh, hey, start here, <laughs> you know, yeah. which is kind of interesting. And probably – probably in the long run more valuable you know to 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 kind of break that down and say and have somebody say hey you know you could do a little better with this part like i know we, we we've had a thing recently where we're like we're telling everybody like hey we got to do this with our website da, 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 da. then we looked at our, our own website was like oh crap we haven't touched these for a while and we need to do something about this you know and that's now on the list of things that we're going to take care of here in the very near future um you know you you you're better at telling every other everybody else how to do their stuff better, and then sometimes you need to look on your own. And and if you're especially somebody starting like like cocky cockpit or these other people that we talk to, um, you know, they're doing it and they don't know what they don't know. And you know, you look at your thing next to, you know, uh, some other podcasts you follow, comedy podcast. You know, every time I I mention podcasting. Uh, to people not at podcast, they're like, oh, I love podcast, Joe Rogan. You know, that's what they think a podcast is, mm -hmm. was a guy like Joe Rogan doing it basically in a radio studio. <laughs> well, that's that's like one of the one of the big things. We were joking about this afterwards, too, is when we've been doing all of the research on our end for stuff, the first thing that people usually ask is, I'm, I'm trying to monetize my podcast. How do I do that? Cool. So are we. <laughs> well, here's, here's but uh, no, but uh, we, we, but we, you know, have part of, part of it figured out. We're trying, we're trying all kinds of different things. Here's the thing that I was just going to tell them, Sorg, mm -hmm. is that the biggest thing that I've learned, and this is one of the things I touched upon in my PodCamp thing, was all the stuff that I've been sh that I've been looking at. The numbers and everything are based on 
how many tens of thousands of listeners you have or how many thousands of listeners you have. How many downloads is, is the biggest thing. And for a lot of them, the threshold is 10,000 downloads. And so, like I was talking about how in my, my session I was jokingly about the 10,000 downloads because if you look at it, any podcast that you generally look at and it's not one of the ones that's more nationally known, it's not, you know, uh, name, Sorg, name some, some popular podcasts for me here. The ones that are not Joe Rogan kind of things, things like Back to Work with Merlin Mann, things like Quit with Dan Benjamin, things like... Um, I mean, like, I guess we can say stuff from the Twitter network this week in tech, this week in Google, Mac Break Weekly, um, Tech yeah. News Today with Tom Merritt, yes, yeah, so you're, uh, you're Cord not, Killers. You're not one of those guys. Um, you know, you're not a famous famous wrestler who has turned to podcasting. Right. You're not Edge and Christian. You're not Stone Cold Steve Austin. You're not Jim Ross. You know, and even those guys. I think everybody that I named for the most part, or at least the people on their network, have come from, I'm a writer that's done this. I'm a TV personality that's done this. So they didn't start a podcast one day as the thing to grow. Yeah, so like they start out with an auto- automatically embedded audience where you know for them to get 10,000 downloads is, is nothing. Uh, for those of us who've been working at it for a bit, it's a little bit more complicated, and you have to take into a, a whole different scheme of, of things on what you have to offer because in addition to your podcast downloads like for us for instance we have our video integration for our facebook feeds we have our youtube videos we have our social media input for things a motorcycle rolling by if you hear that <laughs> <laughs> and then it was one of those things where like i was joking around about the the ten thousand downloads thing that it was jokingly it was 10,000 downloads <laughs> and that became like our joke Which was the, for the weekend on the way to Mad Max to get our gobbleritos as the we survived pod camp again organizer meal uh yeah that was I heard a lot of that in the car yeah so uh it was it was just kind of one of those things that even though you're not getting 10,000 downloads that's a goal to strive toward mm-hmm. and the idea of pod camp is to kind of help you set the stones in place to to kind of get there and it's, again, the coolest thing about it is it's a free conference that we had a lot of people, not a lot, but we had a few people come up after the fact and say, I'm really glad that I attended this because I got, I got this information for free during the sessions on Saturday. And then here I am sitting with you guys on Sunday. And to put it in perspective, most of the, most of the experts in the field that we had available for Sunday discussions generally charge clients anywhere between 75 and a hundred dollars an hour for consultations to do exactly what we just did with, for them for free. Yeah. What do we, we how, what did we say? There was like uh, uh, like $400 of consultation hours or something like that. Yeah. Something you ridiculous know, like that. Considering all of the, the fees that most of us would charge that were in the car for, for what we do. Yeah. And, yeah. and we literally did it for free just hanging out with people on, on Sunday and it was great. And like I said, I know that uh, Kate's probably sitting at home today working on a bunch of bunch of cool things for her project that she's working on. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mentioned our, our friend Cocky Cockpit over there. He's, I'm sure, taking a lot of it into consideration, um, putting together an action plan forward. And I know even as far as like PodCamp itself, the PodCamp organizers, we're sitting down and we're putting things into into motion for the future of how this is going to roll and yeah, what and we're going to be doing with it. We're going to work today and, and using the things. I just did a Facebook Live today around one of my clients' registration things in, in the office as a big tool for them. I mean, it's just a lot of application. Yep. So I guess I guess the this one boils down to just do it. Take the opportunities that are available to you. Learn the stuff that you can learn. Put it into action and see what works for you because again what works for one person isn't going to necessarily work for another person but you at least have that basis that you can then tweak and work for for your own network stuff but yeah it's just get out and do it just do it yes somebody else did that and probably covered that so I w- if you're doing your thing, please let us know. Uh, hit us up on here or any of our social medias at Sorgatron on the Twitter at Rebellious Flaw on the Twitter at Sorgatron Media and Psychic Media Co. Um, you know, hit us on any of those and we'll see it. Uh, messages, Facebooks, um, whatever the case, and we, we'll listen, we'll watch, and we'll we'll critique, and we'll let you know you know what we think and and, and help you move forward. You know, I mean that's what we do, regardless. Uh, you know, for community and and clients. 
So, and a reminder, uh, this Sunday at 1 p.m. right here in the studios um, across the street from um, the taco stand. That's, that's the our... The taco stand in Beach yes, not the one in Brooklyn. Yes. I can't tell you what used to be there. It used to be a food land. Now I'm getting Yinzer directions. Um, this is where the, the food land used to be. No, that's the wrong accent. But anyways, wow. it's back in my roots. But... It, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. it'll be this Friday, 1619 Broadway Avenue here in the Beachview neighborhood. Free coffee, free conversations. That dog is chasing every car. There he goes. <laughs> it's, it's distracting out here. Uh, but anyways, uh, thank you so much, everybody. That was a part of PodCamp Pittsburgh. And we'll see you guys next time. Basic sorghum.